If you're in the end game of Elden Ring, or maybe you're just about to go into New Game Plus, or looking for something a bit different and a bit fun, this build might be just the one for you. This is our end game New Game Plus Faith build that utilizes some really cool weapons, talismans, and some really nice armor that will make you really tanky, really survivable, put out great damage, as well as being able to use all of the faith incantations that you desire with really quite good effectiveness and scaling. The idea and theme behind this build is that we are a tanky, survivable, almost fallen paladin-like character using the Blasphemous Blade as well as the Golden Order Greatsword while donning Radan's armor as well as a variety of talismans that further boost and synergize with the items within this build. Overall, the idea of this build is that you should be able to walk around even the end game areas with relative confidence as you have high defenses, decent poise, very good damaging attacks, very good damaging incantations, as well as a variety of ways to heal yourself up as you go through these areas passively via the Blasphemous Blade as well as our Bestial Vitality incantation and other buffs that make us stronger. As we go through the different components of this build, I will also include some alternate options that you can include depending on your personal playstyle and preference. So remember, this is more of a template for you guys to expand upon, but of course I'm showing you my personalized version of this build. So we'll start it off by talking about the weapons and we'll begin with the Blasphemous Blade. This is our primary weapon. This is the one that is going to be a central core part of this build, simply because it is so powerful and so good and has a really good built-in unique skill, the Taker's Flames, which after a small charge sends out a massive wave of fire forwards that has really decent range that deals really good fire damage that scales off of our faith that also heals us when it connects to an enemy and on top of that the sword also has a passive bonus that further heals us for a percentage of our max health upon defeating an enemy even if we weren't the thing that defeated them with the sword so anything that dies near us will actually heal us as well as an additional heal when using the unique skill takers flames of course, this sword is the Sacred Sword of Rikard, the Lord of Blasphemy, and it has a really cool effect on it where you can see the little wriggling, almost worm, snake tongue looking things, which are actually the remains of countless heroes that have been devoured by this blade and are wreathing upon the surface of it, which is a really cool little touch in the description of this weapon. What's great about this sword as well is the fact that it deals not only physical, but also fire damage, which will synergize with one of our incantations later that buffs our fire and our physical damage but also you'll see I've actually gone to the effort of putting my Blasphemous Blade to plus 10. This is because it's one of the few weapons that I've actually noticed gets a bonus to one of its scaling when going into plus 10. And if you bring it up to that plus 10, you actually get that B tier scaling in faith. And considering that we are a faith build, this is going to be really good for us. The Blasphemous Blade is obtained via trading the Remembrance of the Blasphemous with Enya in the Round Table Hold. So you will have to defeat the boss in the Volcano Manor area in order to get this weapon. I won't show it to you guys, but I'm sure a lot of you have already experienced it and probably already got it already. And for our offhand weapon, we're going for the Golden Order Greatsword. I absolutely love the way this weapon looks, the lore behind it, how it was made. It just looks so fantastic, so I had to include it. It allows us to power stance with the Blasphemous Blade, which gives us a really cool new move set to use and really good power stance jump attacks, which are just fantastic for this build. And this Golden Order Greatsword is actually made of light and is modeled after the Elden Ring itself. It was forged by the King Consort Radagon to proudly symbolize the tenants of the Golden Order. So theme wise works really well with the build as well. It's a legendary armament and also has its own unique skill Establish Order where you raise the armament in a salute to do a golden explosion, but then a repeated input will send out a big wave of golden light that does really decent damage as well. So you can always double hand this quickly in order to do its unique skill depending on the circumstances of the battle that you're in. Much like the Blasphemous Blade, this weapon primarily scales off of Faith with a B tier ranking, D index and E in strength. So because we have such high Faith focus in this build, we are really utilizing both of these weapons to their potential as Faith is our primary stat and is their primary scaling stat. So it all works together and synergizes as well. I just want to re-emphasize how good this sword looks. So I had to include it because it just looks so fantastic. 
You can get the Golden Order Greatsword within the Cave of the Forlorn, which is within the Consecrated Snowfield part of the map. We have a video already on the channel showing how you can get to this area, so make sure to follow that video in order to find this cave, which you can see on the map here. Simply go through the cave, get to the end, beat the boss, and this amazing sword is yours. And then in our second offhand slot, we have the Erdtree Seal. This one I am using because it is one of the few seals that actually outscales all of the other ones once you go past about 66 faith. And we are going up to 80 in this, which we'll cover more in the stat section that we'll get to soon. So for that reason, this seal is the one that I'm using. We don't have a particular focus on specific different types of incantations. So we don't need the passive damage bonus. We're using the seal for our buffs and for a variety of incantations to your choice. So this seal, because it starts to outscale the other ones at this high faith, is the perfect accompaniment for this build. You can find this one by going to the Prison Town Church site of Grace near the Volcano Manor, and in the middle of this area there'll be a big campfire with an omen killer enemy. Kill him, go to this sort of cell area, and there is a body inside that you can loot to get this seal for yourself. Next we'll move on to the armor. For most of my armor pieces I'm using Redan's armor because I think the visual style of it works really well for this build. It's also got very good defenses and very decent poise. Of course you will have to have beaten Redan and then you can buy it from Enya in the round table hold. But I really do like this armor and Redan's such an iconic boss that I just really wanted to use this armor but use whatever armor you sort of see fit for yourself. For the helmet though you want to go for something that will boost your faith. It's not incredibly important but every little helps. I've gone for the Halleck Tree Helm that drops from the Halleck Tree Soldiers within basically the whole Halleck Tree area in the north of the map, but you can also go for the Sacred Crown Helm. It's an alternate look for plus one faith. The Ruler's Mask is another good one for plus one faith. There's also the Halleck Tree Knight Helm, which will give you plus two faith, but I don't really like the way this one looks, but that's up to you. There's also the Imp Head Corpse, which also gives plus two faith and has good resistances, but weighs a bit more. And then finally, Finally, there's the Great Hood that will give plus two faith and int, but lowers your HP by 10%, and you don't need int for this build, so I wouldn't really use the Great Hood. I'm also using Malaketh's Gauntlets just because I like the way they look and I think it all works together with the visual style of this build. Of course, you will have to have beaten Malaketh and then buy this at the round table hold from Enya to get this exact set that I have here. And now we're going to go over the talisman options and there are some alternate options that you can pick and choose based on your playstyle that we'll go through in this section. And we're starting off with the Radagon's Saw Seal. This is absolutely fantastic as it offers a big variety of plus five to a lot of core stats. So you're gonna get plus five vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity at the trade-off of taking 15% more damage from basically all damage types. However, I do think having plus five in all of those core stats that will benefit us across everything in this build is definitely worth it. You can find the Radagon Saw Seal in Fort Faroth basically by making your way up to the roof, jumping down this hole, doing a little bit of parkour and then jumping to the body, killing a few rats along the way. It's definitely worth picking up. This is a fantastic talisman to have. The next talisman that we're using is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. This one's fantastic because it will help mitigate that bonus damage that we're taking from the Saw Seal, as this gives us about 20% physical damage negation, which is just really good to have and will make us a bit more tanky. This one's gained from the brace of the Halleck Tree area. It's in a chest in a platform that's in this large building northeast, guarded by several of these pest enemies. There's essentially a linear route that you want to take from the drainage channel site of Grace. Follow that around, make your way to the roof, drop down, grab this for yourself. It's really, really quite good. Then next we're using the Shard of Alexander. This greatly boosts the attack power of our skills, so both our Blasphemous Blade and Golden Order Greatsword will get about a 15% damage bonus. This is fantastic for this build. Of course you will have to do the Iron Fist Alexander questline by talking to Iron Fist Alexander in various locations until eventually you duel him and defeat him and get the Shard for yourself. 
And then the last one for my personal preference is the Old Lord's Talisman. This extends the spell effect duration of our buffs, and we will have a lot of buffs once we talk about the incantations soon. It gives about a 30% duration bonus, and because the buffs are quite powerful, this is going to be really quite nice for us, and we will have alt options if you don't like this one, but that extra buff duration really synergizes well with this build. You can find this one in the crumbling Farum Azula area, Essentially, by beginning at the Beside the Great Bridge grace point, you can make your way through a specific path along the crumbling bridge away from the boss, going down a ladder, and then eventually you'll find a chest with this item in it. The alternate talismans that I can suggest to you if you want to swap things out for your personal preference will start off with the Taker's Cameo, which will restore health upon defeating enemies, which will then stack with your Blasphemous Blade, meaning that every time you kill something, you're healing even more. Alternatively, you can go for the Ancestral Spirit's Horn that will do the same thing but give you FP when defeating enemies. Personally, I don't think it gives enough to be worth it, but a bit of passive FP regen is really nice considering you do want to use your Blasphemous Blade for its high damage output and healing when you need it. There's also the Sacred Scorpion Charm and the Fire Scorpion Charm that will increase either fire or holy attack damage. Fire will be great because the Blasphemous Blade uses a lot of fire and we have fire incantations. The holy will be great because the Golden Order Greatsword also deals holy damage, but these also lower your damage mitigation so you will be taking more damage and we're already taking extra damage from the Radagon's Saw Seal. So I'm not using these myself, but they are both viable if you can take that extra damage. The Carry On Filigreed Crest is also great because it will lower the FP cost of our skills for our Blasphemous Blade and our Golden Order Greatsword. And if you want to lean more into the incantation side of this build, the Radagon Icon for the shortened spellcasting time is a great option. And the Phlox Canvas Talisman is also great as it will greatly raise the potency of our incantation damage. So these two are really good if you want to spec more into the incantations. Now we're going to go over the stats. Of course, this is an end game build designed for New Game Plus, so we are going to want to to get at least 80 faith here. This is essentially the third soft cap and our weapons scale obviously mainly with faith as well as our seal and incantations. So faith is going to be the biggest core of this build and hitting 80 will basically be the sweet spot where you don't need to really go any higher. We are using some heavy armor, so having 50 endurance, which is the fourth soft cap, is going to be really, really nice. We need stamina for everything we do, our jump, power stance attacks, casting incantations, dodge rolling. Stamina is going to be a great thing to have, and endurance will give us that, as well as increase our weight. Then for our mind stat, I recommend going to about 26. For me, this is a sweet spot because it's just enough to do almost all the summons, such as Black Knife Titch, but it also is perfect for those buffs, those incantations, and also using our weapon skills without having to worry too much about mana. 26 is a nice sweet spot for me personally. When it comes to Vigor though, this is up to your personal preference. For me, I aim to get between 30 and 40 as this is the sweet spot that I find is perfect for most bosses, but of course go as high or as low as you personally need to. I do recommend going higher if you are struggling in the game. And then strength and dex, we need a minimum of 22 strength, a minimum of 21 dex, but go as high as you can with the levels you have because boosting these further will just add more scaling into our weapon damage, but 22 strength and 21 dex is the requirements to wear the weapons, but remember they scale best with faith and we already have 80 faith, but go as high as you can on these without sacrificing your other stats. Moving on to our incantations, these are really, really quite important and really do beef up our build. We're starting off with the Golden Vow, which is absolutely fantastic. Roughly an 80 second buff or 104 seconds with the Old Lord's Talisman that we're using in this build. It gives about a 15% damage increase and 10% damage reduction buff. And it's also an AOE team buff. So this is just absolutely fantastic. You can find this in Mount Gelmer inside of this shack. It's a lootable corpse in this area you can see on the screen now. The next buff that we're using is Bestial Vitality. This gives us a heal over time for around 120 seconds. It's just an absolutely great passive health buff to have, especially when going into a boss room. And you get this by giving the third death route to the Beast Clergyman over in the Bestial Sanctum in Kaelid. Then the next buff that we're using is Flame Grant Me Strength. This one's absolutely great to have. It's a 30 second buff or 39 seconds with our Old Lord Talisman. It gives us about a 20% physical and fire attack power bonus, which works with basically our L2 skill on the Blasphemous Blade, as well as the fire damage bonus of the Blasphemous Blade and our fire damage incantations, I believe also benefit from that fire attack bonus as well. You can find this one behind Fort Gale on a body between two of those flame 
thrower enemies just run there pick it up and run away if you're struggling another buff that i sometimes add into this build is the black flames protection this gives us around a 35% physical damage negation buff, which is absolutely massive, but it reduces our healing by 20%. But the Bestial Vitality will still heal us over time, and our Sword will still heal us, so the healing negation isn't too bad considering how much physical damage negation we get. So it's a nice option if you want to be even more tanky. Probably the easiest way to get this is once you've progressed far enough to defeat Gideon the All-Knowing, in which case it can be purchased at the Twin Maiden Husks, but you can also get it from him by talking about the dialogue option about the secret medallion if he's still in the round table hold. Then when it comes to damaging incantations it's mostly up to your personal preference so take what works for you but I'll give you my suggestions. We're starting off with the black blade. This one of course comes from the remembrance of the black blade from Enya at the round table hold once you've beaten Malaketh the boss but this is absolutely fantastic because it can be used twice in relatively quick succession and it reduces a foe's maximum HP and continues to sap their current HP for a short while after connecting. This is fantastic for bosses with high health pools as it reduces their max HP and then basically makes them take tick damage. We also are including the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. This one's fantastic because it has huge burst damage potential, but it does have a rather long cast time. But situationally, if you can pull it off, it's definitely worth it. And you get this after you have obtained the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book, which is in the Crumbling Farum Azula area, near the Crumbling Beast Grave Depths Site of Grace in the middle of the large building next to that area. The next one is Catch Flame. This is a very early game one, but it's very FP efficient, very fast to cast, and does absolutely great burst damage when cast in rapid succession. Obviously, it has a short range, but if you have the opening, spamming this is sometimes your best option to get tons of damage out. You could of course get this if you started as the Prophet class or from Brother Corn in the Round Table Hold. I've also chosen to include the Rotten Breath incantation because this is a fantastic way to put Scarlet Rot on basically anything, including bosses, so you can always open with the Black Blade to tick max health and do tick damage, and then follow up with Rotten Breath to put Scarlet Rot on the boss, and overall they'll just be melting before they even reach you. You can of course get this from the Dragon Communion Altar at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion for one Dragon Heart. This is a very, very good one, and definitely don't sleep on Scarlet Rot as a status. And the final one that I've gone with, and we'll include some alternate mentions afterwards, is the Giant's Flame Take The. This is fantastic because it's a huge AoE fireball that does actual great damage, so it's just a good option to have and have in your arsenal at all times. You can get this once you've got the Giant's Prayer Book, which is inside of a chest at the top of the Guardian's Garrison in the mountaintops of the Giants. For alternative options of incantations, take what you want and what works for you. The casting time and the damage varies between them quite greatly, but overall all the Lightning Spear, Lightning Strike, and Honed Bolt are great, fantastic, and FP efficient options for damage, while also some of the Frenzied Flame spells are great, such as the Frenzied Burst, if you want to have an option to snipe enemies from further away, the Frenzied Burst is absolutely fantastic. And I also do quite enjoy the Stone of Garank, and you basically become the Hulk hurling giant rocks at enemies, and the damage is very good as well. But take what works for you, and remember that we are Faith scaling primarily, so the ones that scale with faith will obviously outperform the others. And then for our Wondrous Physic Mix, I've gone for, of course, the Flame Shrouding Cracked Tear, which will boost our fire attacks, and we do have a lot of fire attack options in this build, but also the Opaline Bubble Tear for that extra damage shield so that we can tank an extra hit, and we're already quite tanky, so this just gives us even more confidence. For the locations of pretty much all of the tears, we have a video already on the channel that you can check out if you want to find out where you can get these different tears for your Wondrous Physic Mix. Of course, do drop a like down below and let us know in the comments what you think of this build. If you have any suggestions, changes, tweaks, or enhancements that you can make to it, let's use it as a template, learn together and build from it and make a really cool faith build together. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you're staying safe. We have another video on screen now that we think you will really enjoy, so don't miss out. Click on the video on screen now and we'll see you guys next time.